Okay, welcome, 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 welcome. This is going to be the second episode of 2021's Heart Center Conversation. So um, for everyone out there listening, whether you're watching on YouTube or on the podcast, welcome back. Um, my guest today is Amanda Jansen. Yeah. Am I saying it right? Jansen. Yeah. Jansen. And Amanda is local to me <laughs> in Emporia, but she's doing things all over. So I'm so excited to talk with Thank you. So welcome, you. Amanda. I'm honored that you even thought of me. Yay. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know, I've been wanting <laughs> I've been craving this too. Like I've kind of followed along and just the, the passion like behind this, like the intimate, like one-on-one -on -one conversations that we're not really getting right now. I think a lot of yeah. people are and, and just like talking about um, our heart-centered work, like the work we're doing out in the world or how we're showing up in the world because it's kind of scary. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's kind of scary to show up. And so I, you know, like these, I want to have real conversations with real people and not that everybody's not real, but you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're all like somewhat local and we're going to be interviewing some people who are not local at all, but all doing heart centered work. So I'm glad that you're excited. Yes, I am. So, okay. So I went on to your YouTube or your Instagram. And you have a lot of things under there. So I'm so excited to talk about all of these things. So it says you're an OB nurse, mm -hmm. a lactation consultant, a doula, mm -hmm. and yeah. coaching families through birth, breastfeeding, and beyond. So I love that. So I'm going to turn it over to you. And I want you just to tell us who you are mm -hmm. uh, and tell us, tell us what, what you're doing. Like, yeah, so I went into nursing not really knowing the direction I would go. Um, I know I wanted to care for people. Like I've always been, yeah, the very caring person. And I think from like a small town perspective, like I grew up, my high school graduating class had 14 people in it. And I, at that point, you know, I didn't know what a doula was. Um, and I was like, oh, to care for people, you had to be a nurse. And so that was the direction I went, like immediately out of high school. That was my plan. Um, I did some college sports and, you know, just to kind of help with um, the prerequisites, the scholarships and stuff. But I ended up, yeah, going to nursing school, landed in Emporia and found a job right out of college working OB, which is obstetrics. So again, in a smaller rural town, you do labor and delivery, you do postpartum. We have like a level two nursery. So not very intensive NICU, like some of the bigger um, city hubs and their hospitals there. So, I mean, I was, yeah, kind of thrown into the whole spectrum of everything. Um, and then shortly afterwards, um, did not realize the education that was lacking on the breastfeeding side of it. And I had no kids to myself. So I was like, how am I supposed to help these moms breastfeed? You know, when you're not taught in nursing school, you know, how to support a mom that way. Um, and really like, even as a new grad, there wasn't a lot of good education and training surrounding lactation. Um, but I was breastfed myself. Uh, and I think something just sparked and came naturally. And I was kind of that nurse, like other nurses look to, to like go help the mothers. Um, and I was like, well, why, you know, why don't I just get the certification? And so I started that about three years. I tested three years into my nursing career. Um, Cause you have to have, you know, thousand plus clinical hours and all this. Like, wow. Training. And so it was, easier for me because I did, you know, have the nursing background, some um, IBCLCs or lactation consultants come from, you know, just no like medical background. And it is a little bit harder to like, you know, get those clinical hours. So that's why I was able to do it um, kind of on a faster pace. So I've been a lactation consultant for five years. And then after the birth of my own baby about two years ago, I 
something just switched. Um, and it kind of was the kick in the butt that I needed <laughs> to get out of the, the system I was in. I love the hospital system and, you know, rural areas, you know, need that. Um, but I was craving a more like intimate, longer term um, relationship with these moms and these families, because again, you know, I'm there for 12 hours and then I never see them. And I knew that the systems in other countries were different. You know, they were having postpartum follow-ups with nurses, like in the comfort of your home. You weren't having to drag your baby to a doctor's office, like when you're bleeding and, right. bleeding and in pain. Right. And I was like, why am I waiting around to, you know, for a system that's probably not going to change in my lifetime. Like I pray that it does, but I don't know that it will. And why would I, you know, not try and pursue that passion and that need. Um, and I, that's when I looked into postpartum doula work and received a training through Dona International. And they're a bigger, um, organization that kind of yeah, trains birth doulas and postpartum doulas um, for, you know, moms or for women or, you know, men too um, can be doulas. They, you know, if they don't have the medical background, they still need some training. And that's the organization I chose to go with. Um, and so, yeah, for two years now, I mean, everything kind of was catapulted last year at the beginning of all of this COVID pandemic, you know, I was reading of hospitals, you know, banning doula support and moms laboring by themselves, you know, without even their partner there. Um, and I was just like, these moms are not, they're not going to do well. Like even on a good day in our broken system, like we're not doing well. <laughs> and I'm like, right. and so that's when I kind of, you know, I had time to set aside now. Like I had quit my job as a part-time nurse and was just working as needed. And so I had the hours to like sit at home and work on a website and like launch the business side of things, which I am not business savvy. <laughs> so that <laughs> took a long time, honestly. <laughs> Um, and so I think it was like March of last year, like a few days before, like it was, COVID. it was, uh, yeah. And I remember Step like down, calling right? the state, you know, and licensing my business and like dealing, like, I don't even want to know what they were having to go through. Um, cause it was, it was all on the phone and I was new and needing help and yeah. So, I mean, the first year it has been, you know, slow, um, but I have started seeing moms um, privately for lactation, um, okay. mainly in the Kansas city areas and a few moms, very rural, like Kansas, like, you know, population 50. And again, they're, you know, hours away. They haven't had follow up with their OB and it's they're eight months postpartum. And I'm like, how many moms are falling through the cracks, especially in our area? Um, I yeah. think the city is a little bit different because there are more providers. And but when you get to yeah, rural Kansas, it's a different story. So yeah, and I think that people don't know that this is available, or mm -hmm. they feel like it's I maybe didn't. <laughs> it's maybe so like you know, on the realm of woo woo, oh, yeah. way, way alternative. Like, like if you have a doula, you're going to be eating your placenta and <laughs> like, that's just like, I think a given sometimes. And Water I, will, birth. I will be completely honest as a new nurse, there was some reservations like with doulas in the beginning. Cause again, it was just the system that I was brought up in and taught in you know, they were looked at as, yeah, like unsafe or, you know, too crunchy and not following science. And I'm like, but what was, <laughs> what was our OB system built on? Like, honestly, right. like, if you look at the history, it's disgusting. And there are some amazing OBs um, and family doctors, but I think the history of it gets lost and I'm like, we have, we're just like so out of touch of like 
the innate wisdom, yeah. the innate ability of our bodies to birth. Like we have to medicalize every single thing. Yeah. And I, there was a point even before my baby that I realized like, again, I'm one person, I can't change the system from within and I burnt myself out. And yeah, it, it took a traumatic birth for me to get out. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that that even when we talk about giving birth now, like I, from my first birth to my last birth, you know, just being able to look at, um, and my kids span, my oldest is like, God, he's going to kill me. 33. I don't even really know. I stopped keeping track. Uh 33 or 34 and my youngest is almost 15 you know so just in that span of giving birth on the table in a certain position not being able to move to the last one like um I can get up and walk I can sit on Uh a ball I can squat I can do all of these things if I want to yeah um but nobody you know and also with lactation um just being able to be supported in that like I tried to nurse my second child and it was the worst experience I've had and so I didn't even think about it my third child and then the baby when I had him it was like no I'm gonna try this again and I did have I did go to the lactation center so and they were so helpful but even just nursing in public and nursing you know this is almost 15 years ago was like so like, okay, I'm going to go hide myself here. Uh Um, so having someone that would have been able to consistently help me instead of taking my baby to the lactation center and being in a circle with a whole group of other women and, you know, Uh not wanting to show my boobs and, you know, being in a room where some people are comfortable doing that and some people aren't. Yeah. Um, but it was one of the most treasured experiences that I have nursing him Mm -hmm. like and I nursed him for you know till he was about 13 months and I did that whole like I'll try it for a little bit but it was or you know it they're like (laughs) or you have 13 months or six months it is it's almost like um I think so many moms yeah go in wanting wanting to do it and I mean we see this with you know the numbers and the statistics behind it you know there's this there's this desire to do it it's just the system is so broken in so many areas and so many don't get the support and then you know then the guilt and there you know is some there's trauma behind like moms that you know wanted to breastfeed and couldn't and so recognizing that and trying to you know bridge as many gaps as possible you know and lactation consultants are only you know one piece of the puzzle but there, there's not enough of us to really, um, even meet all the needs that, you know, moms are needing right now. I think the profession is growing, you know, people know that I think there are lactation consultants now where before, you know, they would just go to their OB or their pediatrician. And we know, you know, they're given like four hours of education, like, right. And they are not that, you know, building block up. And again, just um, the system's broken on so many levels. Like so yeah. many, so many like OBs or even PEDS I, I, where we're at, we have amazing support. But I, I, I know in like those bigger hubs, if they don't know where to refer out, they just get dropped and have, you know, given a package of formula because that's what's. Yeah. in the office right there you know when you know the mom's breaking down and you know the baby's crying and they don't have any in you know office support so I'm hoping yeah just the awareness of it um keeps growing and then yeah the postpartum doula side is still yeah (laughs) tell me more about that tell me more so so are you a doula that helps birth a birth doula I am not trained as a birth doula okay but again there I've like traveled to um in Guatemala is actually one of the areas that really like inspired me you know they were having you know they had traditional birth attendants there like they weren't trained in anything but 
in these rural villages, like these moms you, needed yeah. help. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I tried to like bring that passion and that learning, um, from there and realizing that, you know, you don't need an initial behind your name to support someone through birth. Like if you look back, you know, the grandmother or the mother, like it was generational wisdom, like passed down. And, um, I feel like I've learned so much. Like I know I needed that seven years of like OB nursing experience to get the, um, yeah, just the, the real life experience and knowledge and, you know, a weekend training for me, I don't think make or breaks, um, that relationship I can build with a family, um, and support them. So I do want to eventually transition into more, yeah, that one-on-one birth coaching, birth doula work. Um, but my daughter's so young and we just now have reliable daycare. And I don't know that I was ready for the on-call life um a year ago when I was yeah still doing a lot of healing work um so yeah we'll see how it transitions in the next few years as she gets older and you know goes off to school but yeah that is probably my end goal is supporting women through like even preconception like before they even get pregnant so kind of like the whole process because it's it's a journey like it is one of the main major journeys of a woman's life if that's what she chooses Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so So, finding them and supporting them beforehand and then throughout their pregnancies you know at birth and if they choose to breastfeed um you know I have that experience and then yeah like a postpartum doula honestly it's just you know what we have been doing for eons but now we all live in you know single family homes and grandma's not you know they're with you and they might be in another state or two hours away and you don't have the support like no woman was meant to raise a baby by herself in a home without help (laughs) so that's kind of what a postpartum doula does is come and support you um yeah, either after hospital yeah. discharge or if you have a home birth, you know, just continuing that care, you know, after the doctor or the midwife leaves or after you get discharged home. Um, and it can be, you know, as much help or as, as little help as you want. Some people just want like meals brought to them. Um, others want like the full night nanny luxury like you know you watch the baby and bring it to me when it's ready to eat and then you know go settle it and you know so I can get longer stretches of sleep so it really is kind of whatever um you're wanting um yeah that is that's my spiel I like that (laughs) Mm -hmm. So let's talk about like the heart centered part of it. Cause this is what I always love. I always love to hear this story and you did talk a little bit about it. And I'm so impressed that you like became a lactation consultant or got that education before you even became a mom and nurse. Uh So I think that that's amazing. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And again, like I look back like to my childhood and I think I was destined for this space like I grew up watching like the baby story on TLC I don't know if you remember that show but it and again it was so different than what is available now those were all hospital births you know they all had epidurals and nobody was Uh in and it was all this you know peaceful like the baby's born and but it was like kind of that spark as a child like you know we would you know, play with my siblings, like pretend like you're having a baby. Like we would like imitate <laughs> like the the show. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, I think the, the lactation piece just came so naturally and, you know, I went with it. Now it did, it took, you know, having my daughter, um, I did not hire a doula, which I probably should have. Like I kind of thought like, oh, I have all this education and training. Like, I don't need any help. Um, But the birth piece, I mean, I had an amazing birth, but there was um, just some issues after Nora was born 
that I definitely could have benefited from like an advocate and my husband again like you know he kind of just thought like everything would go perfectly and you know right. wouldn't need help or you know need something like need someone to like advocate for her um but I did you know after after you have a baby like the hormone shifts are just so intense and as much as we want to be that like strong like powerful like voice like I just I didn't make my needs known loud enough or often enough or soon enough before you know I had a very traumatic experience after I got discharged home so mm -hmm. cool not cool that you had that but I love that you have that experience that personal yeah. experience to be able to advocate i'm always um kind of brought back to the thought that the wound is the gift you know like uh -huh. a lot of times when we are go into this work of healing in this really holistic service of whatever it is and whatever we look at most people come into this space because of a wound that they have or a yeah. trauma that we have or something that we are healing from so that we have that experience. And it almost is sometimes what propels us or really moves us into that space of, you know, we could be walking that space, but once we, you know, really set eyes on like, no, like I, this is, this happened to me and I'm going to advocate There's for other like people purpose. because purpose behind the pain and I keep coming back to that phrase and when you're in it like you don't want to be told that and right. I, I very <laughs> I distinctly remember like a period postpartum where I was just I, I mean I was having like PTSD like I was just so angry at like just different people and the different scenarios or the, the situation that happened and I could not, you know, I couldn't grasp that in the moment. And then, yeah, when you're out of it, you're just like so grateful for that. And yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I, I like what you just said, because you just defined your experience as PTSD. Like, and I think that so often because giving birth and breastfeeding is such a, a natural part of, you know, a mother's journey or this process of life, right? Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. we don't always see that there are traumatic experiences that come from those very beautiful things. Mm -hmm. um, and so really kind of helping people to see like, you could be carrying some post-traumatic stress, some triggers mm -hmm. when it comes to a birthing experience or a lactation experience that is yeah. really real like you know and I mean and the numbers if you the numbers prove it like yeah. I learned so much and I I knew of this even before her you know I've supported moms through very traumatic deliveries and I even um supported one of my best friends through a very traumatic birth but I was like the only one aware of that and, you know, even six months, eight months, 12 months out, you know, I was still sending her trauma information. Like, it's okay. Yeah. You know, you're going through this and working through this, but just know that you're not alone. And I, I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head. I think they're on my website, but it was, it was the, the, um, Ex lived experience that you know I needed to really connect on that more like intimate level with other moms in similar situations because again like you um yeah you just learn and take so much with you you know from an experience like that and you know you can use it as a benefit and serve somebody else so yeah mm -hmm. I think even in looking at um, people who don't have a live birth or um, have yeah. had, you know, a, a child that had some kind of trauma mm -hmm. after the birth, you know, there's still that experience of, you know, like I've known people who have had not so much a traumatic birth, but something has happened to 
the baby right after that then even you know getting pregnant the next time caused so much stress yeah. and anxiety yeah. and you know helping someone through that process so how does someone go about finding you and working with you like, like at, mm-hmm. at what point do they say like I need a postpartum doula I mean, the earlier, the better, honestly. <laughs> um, so and even I, like if they don't even, of, they don't even, they're not even to that point, like they're pregnant, they could like, I'm yeah. going to have, have you with me in the process. I okay. think if we can change the culture and like, if we think about like planning for a wedding, you know, how many months and how much money has gone into like right. arranging every perfect, you know, piece of your w- wedding day. And then to realize, you know, pregnancy is nine months and birth could be three to five days or a week, you know, if you have prodromal labor and then you're postpartum like indefinitely basically. Yeah. So like changing the mindset of, you know, what if you had, you know, that support person before, you know, you even peed on the stick you know, and you knew that that was one person that you could go to, you know, you can't call a doctor at 3am and actually talk to your doctor. I mean, I don't know that I will be (laughs) awake at 3am, but I will see your text, you know, the next morning and get back with you a lot quicker than, you know, had you, you know, yeah, called your OB or called your you know, mom that maybe can help you or your grandma that, you know, maybe has, you know, experienced something or known someone that experienced something. So, um, I don't know, did I answer your question? (laughs) Like how, (laughs) like, do they have a consultation with you? Do you? Yeah. 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 So I, yeah, I offer like free discovery calls again, just to see, you know, if we are the right fit because, everybody, you know, has that person. Um, and maybe it's not, maybe you don't even want, you know, that extra body at, in the room or at your birth, but you just want, you know, that person to either virtually, um, connect with, um, that's an option too. Um, so yeah, as soon as possible. Um, I mean, I know so many doulas are birth doulas specifically, you know, can get booked out pretty far in advance because you can only take so many a month before you risk like some overlap and things going a different direction and you're not right. actually getting the support in person that you're wanting. Um, and the same with, you know, I, I had a birth photographer. That's the only thing that I did have at my birth and I treasure those so much. But yeah, you basically like find out you're pregnant and see if you, you know, can fit in their schedule. Um, thankfully my schedule right now, because I have, you know, transition from the hospital part-time, you know, is pretty open. Um, but yeah, the sooner the better, because then you can really build that long lasting, like intimate relationship and, um, you know, be able to serve, you know, them a lot better, um, when birth actually comes and yeah, postpartum as well. Cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. So I know that you do some other things Mm. that aren't in there. I know that you (laughs) do a little bit of essential oils and I, um, I, this last year has really, as tough as it was, it honestly was probably one of the most like freeing years for me and it sounds like you know it should be the opposite but it was you were able to really sit with yourself and figure out you know what what have you been told to believe and what are you doing for other people versus what are you really you know wanting to do for yourself um and incorporate like so many like I just I learned like so much about so many different (laughs) things out there not so much the essential oils like because I had been you know using those but I mean I found you I think two years ago was that when we did God, our has it been that long yeah. I don't I don't know and so since then you know the Reiki and the energy side has just been it was that like missing link you know we aren't we're taught like the emotional like psychological piece 
but that's never actually like no done in the hospital <laughs> even with a doctor you know like here's your yeah. pill go about your day <laughs> and that's you what might I feel offered. a little sad or you might da, 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 but yeah. yeah and that was what I was offered <laughs> and so I was like and I knew I was like I knew a med a pill was not gonna treat trauma like how do I get this out of my body and then um I honestly don't even know I think it was after you guys opened up your shop and I found out you were even doing private sessions I was like I'm just gonna go and give that <laughs> a try <laughs> and I distinctly remember which I think I've shared with you in like the little workshop that you hosted because you did uh -huh. after that you had a little mini like you know Reiki training that I came to and I was like I gotta go and just like figure out what what just happened because it was it was like I went in like open-minded but and I think back to that time and I was you know I had gone to all these people and I was like I need you to fix me <laughs> I was like all right now I'm just gonna switch to the direction instead of focusing on the western medicine side do the you know, alternative side, but it was the same. Like I went in, I was like, I need you to fix me. <laughs> and I was laying there and I was like, this is so stupid. <laughs> like, this is not, <laughs> like nothing's happening. And it wasn't even like a second or two seconds later. And I think I'm like bawling on your table. <laughs> and there's like, I, I, I know what it was now, but like in the moment, like I just, I didn't know what was happening. And it was just like, pure white light all over the place and I literally was just in a different realm like I didn't know where I was at and I think you were over my heart chakra I honestly don't remember like where you were even at <laughs> but it was it was what I needed like after you know a year of postpartum depression and anxiety and again looking back it was actually trauma and PTSD but it was yeah. that way because I was in a constant fighter you know I was in fight or flight so long and then I you know hit like my rock bottom and was literally just like numb and like you know no yeah. this like I and it was it I think gratitude was what came up in that session um, is like the word that like kept coming to you. And I honestly can't remember that because you do so many things. You do like the crystals and the tarot and the, yeah. the Reiki there and are oils. So many things. And it was, it was what I needed like to heal. Like, cause I, um, I had known a mom that died from a, the exact same situation that happened to me postpartum and I was like I was still just so angry at that that I could not um even see like the the benefit of like my life still being here and that gratitude because again I was still just in that resentful angry place you know and not a good place that I ever want to go back to um so yeah honestly that was one of like the turning points of my life and I just that was amazing. love that I was able to like find you and we just happened to be in the same town and I was like what people like this exist like near me <laughs> <laughs> I was like I was just like so excited because then again like small town like you know <clears throat> I mean yeah you only grow up with like a very you know blinded blinded yeah. view of what this world and how many amazing people are in it right. and all the different modalities out there and yeah the Reiki. but that's okay that's why we're doing things like this so somebody can be like holy shit what yeah what? i can okay i need to check this person out mm -hmm. <clears throat> but you are on your reiki journey i know that like you're still using that and but i think the great thing about all of that is that just having that experience of that energetic peace uh -huh. in Which the process I didn't realize like I had been using for years there was just like no word for it like when you're supporting yeah. a mom you know during labor you know and your hands are on them and you're 
you know, either envisioning something or like I was doing it, but like, yeah, totally realize it. (laughs) So, um, yeah, I'm definitely like, I did, yeah, your level one training. I definitely want to hopefully do level two or master, yeah. however many steps. Yeah. There are. However, yeah. Whatever but, that like, looks like. Yeah. I want but, to, uh, yeah, just learn more about, yeah, the history behind it. And yeah, I think we're all given this gift. We're just so like, totally with it. Like and that's, he has that energy and that wait, everybody has it. Everybody has it. And we so all I, have Reiki, which is the universal energy. It's, yeah. And that's so many different, like some people use it with hands-on prayer, you know, mm-hmm. some are just, you know, praying for others or, you know, wishing something upon them. It's all of it is just more powerful with this intention set behind it, yeah. or just this awareness or knowledge of the power of touch, mm-hmm. of support, of advocating and or like yeah just centering yourself and realizing you know getting out of that duty yeah. like just go on about you know your day and your life and yeah this is yeah it's amazing yeah yay I'm so excited so we have a little bit of time left um I want you to tell us where people can find you okay. you said you have a website and we'll post everything with all of the information with this podcast and this YouTube video, but tell us how people can find you. Yeah, so my, everything kind of started getting built on Instagram. I did everything backwards. <laughs> so my Instagram is Midwest Mama Collective. So mama is spelled M-O-M-M-A. And again, it's just, you know, a collective of basically everything that I've learned and done in life. I don't have any, um, buddy working with me like alongside me um but like I hope like teaching is like a huge passion of mine so I'm hoping you know to kind of yeah be that mentor for somebody wanting you know to go that more um like holistic route um whether or not they came from the medical background or you know they're coming in fresh and new and just want to start um that process and then my website is the same. So um, MidwestMamaCollective.com. And I'm on Facebook, the same uh, Midwest Mama Collective. And then, yeah, I mean, you can reach me by telephone, email. I'm honestly kind of old school and love like, a <laughs> phone conversation. I, again, like you just cannot like relay and like, you know, type out like the passion and right thing through email or text so I I love phone calls so you can call me um but yeah I've got my business email and then okay. yeah those social media platforms I'm open in my dm so cool okay so if you are planning on having a baby are in the process of getting ready to have a baby have just had a baby you're nursing like Amanda can help you in all of this process and I love that it's like coaching and it's support and it's advocating and Mm -hmm. I love all of that because we all need we all need we all need that connection and whatever and in whatever cycle of life we're in you know, we need to find people to support us, to connect with us. Like, I think all of life is connecting with people mm-hmm. and building those connections and nurturing those connections because they are so important. Yeah. Like they're so important. Um, so, okay. I've got some end questions for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is your biggest lesson of 2020? Um biggest lesson was living like your truth or like your purpose so again like so many either were forced out of work and maybe it was a job that they just were doing and they didn't like it um and they were just doing it you know for the paycheck um that honestly I think was probably the 
the best thing that I learned. Yeah, like last year was like finding your passion and going for it and realizing, you know, the, the systems that are in place, you know, that's just like a system. Like you don't have to like fall in line with what everybody else is doing. Like you don't, you know, have to graduate high school or go to college, then get married and have your baby. And then, you know, work this nine to five job that you hate until you retire. And like, let's hope you live to be 65 and like get to enjoy retirement. Like you have to like pursue that passion now. And if you're doing something that you don't love, like you're literally just wasting your life away. Basically. <laughs> Good lesson. Good lesson. Find your passion, find yeah. your purpose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what is your go-to self ritual, self-care ritual? So recently it has been meditation because I was not, I was always, yeah, the go, 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 you know, you have this checklist and you need to do these things. And it took a long time for me to even like give myself the permission. Like, you know, you can for once, like not be doing something like you can sit here, you know, for an hour if I can make it that long, most of my <laughs> meditations are only like 20 minutes, but, um, yeah, meditation. I have been reading all of Joe Dispenza's work and I didn't realize like how beneficial, like some of those self-help books were. I'm like, cause you can, you can just learn like so much from people, um, who have different experiences and backgrounds and just different ways of thinking. So just, yeah, meditation and probably like a good podcast slash book, if I can sit Yes, down. you're always sending me good podcasts. <laughs> I, I love that too. So my next question, and you might've just answered it, was what book or books are you currently uh -huh. reading? Yeah, so last year I read um, You Are the Placebo by Joe Dispenza, which oh. is I think amazing for the time that we are in right now. And then my most recent life-changing book was Dying to Be Me. And I honestly don't know the name of the author off the top of my head, um, but it was, it's just an amazing story of, yeah, like miracles. And when you live for, you know, your truth and your purpose and you stop pleasing people, like how that negative like or fear-based energy can impact you physically and cause Ooh. a spectrum of health conditions and diagnosis oh, yes today. definitely um it was it was amazing um that awesome. sounds like awesome was, the, one of the best books i've ever read so yeah dying to be me and i'll text you or okay it. and we'll oh, post it you can link it <laughs> i, I Everybody loves a good book, like, and, and you want to know where to find it. So we want to know what people are reading. Um, last question. Do you have a word or an intention for 2021? I do. It is abundance. Mm. So last year, my word was whimsical. And it actually came to me like in the yoga class that you had hosted, like downtown. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went to... Um, and then I went to or no, it wasn't even a, it was Emmy's yoga class, but then I okay. went to your guys' shop and you had those astrology candles uh -huh. and my Gemini candle, it was like whimsical watermelon. And it was like 10 minutes after I had been bored and I'm like, you're like, okay, no. something <laughs> like the universe has aligned. <laughs> so I bought that. And then we saw how like 2020 played out, but it was like that open-mindedness. I was just able it was like as dark and scary as it was, there were just little bits of whimsy, like things that I had never thought of or had considered looking into just kind of fueled my fire basically. So I cool. want to like manifest that like into abundance. Um, awesome. Financially, like spiritually, uh, 
health wise, like every way, other yeah. health issues. So yeah, mm -hmm. awesome. All right, well, this has been amazing. Yes, thank you so much for having. Thank you. So um, you can find Amanda at her Insta, and we'll post all of those things for you. Again, if you're in this cycle of your life where um, having her as your support, then do it. Like, just do it. Like, don't even think about it. Don't even be like, is this too strange? Like, just set schedule a, a discovery call with her mm -hmm. and just and do it. Talk. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for this. And um, thank you all for listening or watching. And until we return, namaste. Namaste.